Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Um, it's October and so we have pulled out our garden and we've got the last of the vegetables that we didn't pickle or can earlier in the season. And so I have some hot peppers, kind of a mix of hot peppers and some of them, I don't even know what they're called. So I've got these, no clue, I know they're hot. If you've ever gardened, you know that in the spring you write everything down and you say, oh, this year it's gonna be different. I'm gonna remember everything. And then you get to the end and it's like, I don't know what that is, it's hot. Um, I've got some scotch bonnet peppers and I've got some hot banana peppers. Um, although these ones aren't that hot. They're much more flavorful than like mouth searingly hot. Um, whereas these ones are mouth searingly hot. So I'm gonna chop these up and I'm going to lacto ferment them. Um, I also do a quick pickle or a vinegar pickle and I'll link to that below. And I do that every summer, sort of midsummer, with the first picking of the peppers. I've also got a carrot. I'm going to stick a carrot in because I really like carrot in this, um, as well as an onion and some garlic. But at the heart of it is this mixture here of salt and water. So I have one liter of water, and to that I'm going to add 50 grams of salt. And that will give me a 5% salt solution. And that 5% salt solution gives you that perfect balance between inhibiting the growth of the bad bacteria without slowing down the good bacteria. And once the good bacteria gets established, the pH drops to the point where none of the bad bacteria is going to grow in it at all. So that 5% gets us in the right spot. It's not too little salt that might not work and it's not too much salt that will work and kill everything. So I'm just gonna let that dissolve. I'll come back to this a few times and just keep stirring it until I stir it in and get all the salt dissolved. In the meantime, I'm gonna cut up the peppers and I just take the tops off. I leave the seeds in and I maybe just cut them into thirds like that and stick them into, of course, a clean jar. And some of them like those, I don't even cut them up. I just cut the top off. Okay, last pepper. Now, uh, the Onion just gets a rough chop. You don't really have to chop it up too much. I maybe just go into eighths and then stick it in. Carrot and the garlic. I just smash the garlic uh, just to break it up and stick it in. I don't bother uh, chopping it up too much. Once you've broken it open, it's, uh, it's good to go. And the carrot top and tail, and maybe just cut it into quarters. Now, if you have a muddler, a cocktail muddler, now is a good time to use it. And I just use it to press everything down, just a little bit, just to compress it, just so that it's not all at the top of the jar. And that's probably good. So, we've got our salt dissolved in the water, and now we're going to pour it in. And then just press it down again to try to get any trapped air out so that things don't float. Now the next step is to compress everything below the level of the brine. If it's under the brine, everything is fine. So I've got a couple of uh, lids here. I don't know what they were from. They're from something that uh, had food in them, and I've drilled little holes in them and they just sort of squeeze in through the top. It might take a little bit of finagling to get everything below the lid. And I've got a second one that I put in just for good measure. Okay, now you might have one or two floaters above the lid. That's fine, it'll be okay. In here is just salt water. It's just another uh, mason jar with salt water in it fits inside, it just adds a bit of weight to keep everything down below the surface of the liquid. And now we just wait. Um, you don't need to cover it, but if you're worried about stuff falling in or critters getting in, uh, you can just put a tea towel over it. That's all you need to do. Sit it on the back counter and let it ferment. Forget about it for a few days and then come back and look at it and see if it's bubbling. Okay, so this has been sitting on the back counter for about six weeks. Now there's no hard and fast rules about how long it should sit, how long it should ferment. Um, it comes down to your personal choice and what sort of flavor you want. 
the longer it sits, the stronger the flavor gets. And I don't mean the heat from the chilies, I mean that fermented flavor. Um, and so to be completely honest, I forgot about this. A bunch of stuff happened. We went to Mexico for a couple of weeks to learn more about El Pastor and Mezcal. And this sat back there. So this has probably sat longer than I would have liked. Um, but I think the flavor is still going to be great. Now you don't have to do anything with this beyond this point. You could leave it in this jug and eat these simply as pickled fermented peppers. And you can see on the top there, there's a little bit of sort of what looks like white slime around the edges and that's perfectly normal. What you don't see is any mold and mold will be dark and fuzzy. Uh, and that's something that you don't want. And the weight and the plastic disc kept everything below the brine. And if it's below the brine, it'll be just fine. So uh, I am going to turn this into a hot pepper sauce, but let's pull this out and give it a taste. Okay, I just want a little one, just to give it just a bite, just a little bite. Wow. Incredible flavor. Um, there's heat, definitely heat, but there's so much more to it than just heat. There's a depth of flavor there that comes from the lacto fermentation, that comes from the variety of peppers that I put in, comes from the carrot, comes from the onion, all of those other things. I mean, if you just put peppers in, you're going to get heat and you're going to get flavor. But my experience has been if you throw in other things, you can round that flavor out. So I'm going to turn this into a pepper sauce. Let's get started on that. Okay, pepper sauce, really simple. I have a small strainer over a big glass bowl and I'm just going to pour this in. We're going to strain out the brine liquid from the solids. Most of the liquid is out. So I'm just going to put the rest of this into our blender jug and all of the stuff that's in the strainer into the blender jug. Now I also want to add some of the brine in. You need a little bit of liquid just to get the whole thing started. And you don't want to add too much. Just to add in a little bit, you can add more later if you need it. So, um, maybe like a quarter cup. Put the lid on and away we go. Okay, I think that's good. Now, um, how much of the brine you stick in here just makes it thinner or thicker. Uh, thin it down to the level that you like it at. Thin it down to the level of how you want to use it. Some people like it really thin, some people like it on the thicker and chunkier side. I'm somewhere in between, um, although I must admit I never do it exactly the same way twice. Um, so I've just got a mason jar here and I'm going to put this in the mason jar, put a lid on it and stick it in the fridge. Now it will continue to ferment uh, over time. The fermentation isn't done. And so the flavor will continue to develop and change over time. Uh, if you put it in the fridge, it slows that process down, but you can leave it on the countertop. I know a lot of people will either put vinegar in this when, they, when they're blending it, and that vinegar will stop or halt the fermentation process and sort of preserve it at this flavor stage, although the vinegar itself adds a different flavor, so I don't know how you feel about that. Other people will pasteurize it. They'll put this jar into a pot of water, bring it up to temperature to stop the fermentation process completely, put a lid on it, and then stick it in the fridge. And in that case, you do have to keep it in the refrigerator because it could go bad at that point. I don't do either of those things. I live with the fact that it's going to change over time, that the flavor is going to continue to develop, and that this will get used before that happens. <coughs> it is hot, though. Um, my eyes are watering and my throat's a little bit tickled. So that's how easy it is. Um, there's really not much to it. You not many ingredients, you don't really have to babysit it, you don't have to do much to it or about it. It just kind of happens on its own. Now the brine, um, you don't have to throw out the brine. I wouldn't use it again to fully pickle something else, but I do use this brine in the start of the next one because it's filled with the bacteria that we're looking for out of the gate. And if you inoculate your next ferment with this, um, you get that process started faster. 
Uh, I also know that people keep this on hand and keep it in the fridge and also use it as a hot sauce, which is fantastic, which is what I'm going to do. I'll put it in a, in a bottle and hang on to it. Um, so you can put it into soups and stews and all of the places that you would normally use a hot sauce, um, but maybe don't want the full heat and a little bit more flavor, hang on to the brine and use it for that. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.